Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today's video, we're gonna be going over the model of the skin that we have in the laboratory. So the skin model includes all the different components we can find in a normal layer of skin, including the hair follicle right here. So we're gonna go into the different layers of the hair follicle, the main layers of the skin, like the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis, and just the key parts here. Uh, so this again is representing what we would see if doing the laboratory version of this. So. Uh, being able to la label the different parts of the skin is very, very important. Uh, so let's get right into this here, starting with uh, the main layers. So first up here, we have this layer right here. This is called the epidermis. So it's upon the dermis. So this layer down here is called the dermis, but the dermis is broken up into two layers. Uh, so this region up here is called the papillary layer. So papillary layer, I'll just write papillary. So these are called the dermal papillae, uh, these little uh, notches that come up right here. So I, I'll label that one over here. So the dermal papilla. Thermal papilla, these little bumps that come up. Within these little bumps, uh, we find these little receptors. Remember, so one important thing about the epidermis, we'll talk about the different layers of the epidermis. The epidermis is a va avascular, which means it does not have any blood vessels in it, but it is innervated, which means it has free nerve endings. So right here, there are free nerve endings. There's also these little corpuscles or these tactile corpuscles, also called Merkel discs. Uh, I'm not gonna label them here, but these are these little bulbous endings that we see right here. Uh, th so those are little light sensory pressure receptors for the nervous system. All right, so that's on the papillary layer right there. And then this layer down through here, we'll go about right there. This is called the reticular layer. So it's more of a dense connective uh, collagen, elastic fi elastin fiber, uh, co connective tissue down in there holding it all together. Then these two layers combined are just referred to as the dermis. So pretty uh, basic right there. And then below all that, uh, we have the hypo. Hypo is below the dermis. So the hypodermis isn't necessarily part of the skin. We just include it here because we have the cutaneous plexus that goes, or the subcutaneous plexus, which is the blood vessel network that feeds the skin down through here. The yellow, this is all adipose tissue. So adipose is fat, remember? Uh, so that's a you know, shock absorbing and insulation layer beneath the dermis. Um, so these are the major layers. Now I want to go down layer by layer and look at the major components in each. So I'm going to clear this image now. So if you need to take a screenshot, now's the time to do it. Uh, and let's move through. And now, so here I look at the different parts. We'll come back to the major parts of the dermis here in a second. But first, I want to pause it right here. Yeah, right there. More room over here on the right to right. So the epidermis is broken up into a few layers. So right here are these tactile corpuscles again, a little closer seeing them, and here are the free nerve endings. Um, so there are these little uh, papilla uh, plexuses up in here. It doesn't really show it too well. So if there's blood vessels up in here, these little bumps, that's where the blood vessels sit and they feed the underlying tissue. The first layer of the epidermis here is the stratum basale or the stratum basal. Uh, so I'll, I'll write these out. Uh, so basale or basal. Next layer here is uh, this region right in here. So this is just one layer. The stratum basale is also known as the stratum dermiativium. That's where stem cells are dividing. We also find melanocytes there, which are producing melanosomes. Dendritic cells are also found there, which are the immune responders. And then within the papillary layer in the dermis, then we find uh, phagocytes and macrophages. So next layer that we have right here is a stratum spinosum. This is sometimes known as the prickly layer because the keratinocytes are prickly-like cells. Or ke the, the keratinocytes, where they're producing the keratin, growing, and moving their way up through. And then the next layer here is a pigmented layer. It's pigmented because it has granulars in it. Uh, and these are different granules. Some of them are lipid-based, and some of them um, have some other. We're not gonna, I got into that into the lecture portion. But you can see it's slightly pigmented right here. So this is the stratum, and it's pigmented because of granular cells in the keratinocytes. So this is stratum granulosum. 
The next layer here is only found in thick skin. So the only layer found in thick skin, so like the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet, stratum, it's also known as the clear layer, lucidum. So lucid is clear, but lucidum. And then the upper layer here is the, word. so every cell above the stratum granulosum here, these are all dead keratinocytes packed with keratin fibers and melanin. Melanin is what gives skin color, gives skin its pigment color. Um, so this upper layer then is the stratum. So upper is like the cornea or corneum. So the upper layer. So those are the main layers of the epidermis. So make sure you understand if like, you know, if you're inserting a needle into the skin that you know which layers are the order of the layers. And if it's in thick skin, you include the stratum lucidum. Apologies if my handwriting is bad here. It's sometimes hard to you know, write on the video, um, but we can make the most of it. And again, draw this your, yourself too, so you can practice writing the words if they ever come back up again on a practical. Uh, so now let's m move out to rewind here and go back to the main overview and let's talk about some of the other structures we find here. So I'm gonna talk about the hair follicle separately. Uh, so here we have the hair shaft, which is the part that extends above the surface and then down. So we'll talk about that last. Uh, first, next up here, I wanna talk about the gland. So right here is a sweat gland. So sweat glands are also mirocrine glands. And then mirocrine glands are sometimes called ecrine glands. Uh, so these are sweat producing glands. They're not connected directly to a hair follicle and they just secrete out. So this is a sweat duct. And they just secrete out. And so 99% uh, water and then salt and other uh, properties of sweat. But then connected to the hair follicles here, there's another gland. So there's one right up here and one right over here. I'll label this one over here. Uh, so sweat glands are also called sudoriferous uh, glands. And then here, these ones are sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands or oil glands. Uh, so these are producing oil onto the hair follicles. Um, so these produce something called sebum, which is a, oops, I need to write that correctly. Sebum, which is this lipid uh, substance, an oily-like substance. And there's also some bactericidal properties to it as well. And it helps keep the hair healthy. So those are the two main ones there. So we have the sensory receptors here that are closer in the dermal papilla. Uh, then we also have a sensory receptor here. This one is another corpuscle. Uh, so it's, it means it's in the corpuscle means it's an encapsulated nerve fiber. This one is the lamellar corpuscle. And you notice it's, it's these nerve fibers surrounded by this connective tissue. So when this is for pressure. There's also other free nerve endings here for uh, temperature, uh, light pressure, hotter pressure, uh, all sorts of things. And we'll talk about that more when we get to the nervous system. Uh, there are also free nerve endings here that come on the hair follicle as well. So this would be the hair follicle right here. These free nerve endings are then sensing. So if you get a bug that lands on your, you do a light touch on your skin, your hair follicle moves a little bit, those signals are sent from those cells. Uh, right here, we have an important muscle. Uh, this is called the erector pili muscle. This is the one that's responsible for goosebumps. This one also has nerve fibers going to it because it's part of the sympathetic uh, nervous system. And then uh, what else do we have here? So there's nerve fibers that go to that. And then we have the cutaneous plexus over here's another sweat gland. Uh, now there are other glands, the apocrine glands, those are the ones that are in like your armpits and they can cause body odor because they release uh, proteins and lipids with them that bacteria then eat. And then the bacteria release stinky products which create the body odor then. Um, let's see, before we get into the hair, I think we're good. Yeah, just like looking over my notes, making sure we got all the main components remaining here before the hair. All right, so uh, moving on then to where we zoom into the hair a little bit better right here. So here's the, the root or the main follicle part. So this whole thing's called the root, then this is the follicle at the bottom, then the hair shaft is what comes up above the scalp. So the first thing we have in this root is this little capillary network that comes in and comes back out. That little capillary right there is called the hair papilla. Kind of like the uh, 
papillary plexus up in the dermal papilla. And then right above that, we kind of have the uh, cortex, and this is also where the hair matrix is right here. So the hair matrix is right here. This is where uh, new keratinocytes, oops, matrix, are growing and dividing. Um, so that would be this layer right here. One second, let me go to uh, my notes. Uh, and then this little, just because every model is slightly different, so I want to make sure I label this one right. So I think this is all part of the hair matrix right here. Uh, then within this region, uh, you also have little melanocytes, which are producing the pigments in the hair. So there are melanocytes down here as well. So if you destroy this region, this hair follicle won't work as well anymore. And then right here in the hair follicle, we have the uh, medulla in the cortex. Uh, so if we go back here, the pink part here is the middle, or the medulla. And then this white part here is in the cortex, and all this then makes up the cuticle. Uh, same thing up here when we go up here. There are then some more layers we add to the hair. So this outer layer is this fibrous uh, connective tissue. It's a peripheral connective tissue around the hair. Hold on, let me uh, move up there to write that. Uh, so if we have the cortex right there, the next layer out of the cortex, there's uh, this root sheath. So these are both part of the root sheath then. Uh, not, there's an internal and external root sheath, then a glassy membrane, and then this is the fibrous connective tissue. Not quite as important as the rest of the model here, but I did want to mention them since they are labeled on the model, so I won't write them out there. Uh, remember, this is the hair roots and hair follicle, and then the hair shaft as we move up. So playing through the rest of this video here, uh, just showing over you know, the rest of the parts of the model, show the different angles of it, a hypodermis down here. So this is the general breakdown of the skin model. Uh, so it's important to know this, since some of these could come back up in practical and so forth. Um, I believe this is the Atlee model. Uh, it could be wrong, I forget which model this is. We order from different companies. Um, but yes, uh, make sure you understand this model, label it in notes, draw it yourself, and practice on your own. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but it's not, I hope you all have a great day, and bye-bye.